President Biden heads to Baltimore today, a week and a half after a bridge collapsed at a major shipping port. Engineers expect limited access to that channel will be available again come May. For now, companies are diverting cargo. Authorities believe six people died in the bridge collapse. They've still not found the bodies of four of them. There are currently vessels and crew stuck in the port, while engineers work on a temporary channel. The port of Baltimore is one of the largest ports in America, so naturally there are concerns about how this impacts the supply chain. So this morning, Morning. Experts are weighing in on that very thing. NBC 5's Lana Quillen is in the studio with us this morning with some insight from her conversations with TCU. Alana, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, TCU operates the Center for Supply Chain Innovation, so they have been keeping a close eye on this situation. The Port of Baltimore is the top domestic port for anything tied to autos because it's the closest port to the Midwest auto industry. So having that out of commission, we could expect to see some degree of disruption with cars. A lot of auto dealerships now have pretty good inventories again. And so it's probably going to be some smaller companies that feel it the most, companies that couldn't afford to have a lot of extra inventory or couldn't afford to reroute their goods to other ports, which is going to, it's going to take more time and, and money to do that. Now, the port is also a major hub for other goods like wood materials, farm equipment, and sugar. Baltimore's port also has a deeper water and can handle larger cargo ships than other East Coast ports, and those ships can't get in right now. But here's the good news. Experts tell me there should be pretty minimal impact or interruptions to supply chains. Cargo traffic is able to divert to ports in New York and New Jersey that can handle the extra loads because they actually completed expansions just after the pandemic. Now, there might be added costs and delays for many companies from the diversions, and we don't know if that passes down to consumers. But overall, logistics experts are working to minimize the impacts through the entire, entire supply chain system. I don't think there's going to be a huge impact here in Texas. We have the Port of Houston, and a lot of our goods come from the West Coast by rail. So these uh, ports play a big role in transferring the many uh, shipping containers we see stacked on cargo ships onto rail cars or trucks. And thankfully that can happen in different places if necessary. Now, one thing Professor Browning made very clear that I didn't even know about is that the Baltimore bridge collapse is not helping the other supply chain issues happening in other parts of the world right now. There is a drought in Panama that's affecting the Panama Canal and making it hard for ships to pass because there's not enough water in the canal's locks. That will impact ports from China to the United States. He says the situation in Gaza is also affecting movement through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal. Now, back in Baltimore, at this point, experts predict it will take at least a couple of months to clear the wreckage, and that's the one thing keeping new cargo from going in there. In the studio, Alana Quillen, NBC5.